thanks very much, Chair, and thanks very much for inviting me to this meeting, which uh, I think it's a very important meeting, and this campaign is a very important campaign, which is long overdue. We've had years of this, and we haven't really mobilized yet to defeat it, and I think that the uh, inauguration of a campaign like this is exactly what it, what's needed, because since the war on terror, and especially since the 2005 bombings here in London, there has been a systematic campaign of vilification and delegitimization of Muslims in the media. There has been indiscriminate harassment of the community by the police and the security services. There has been abuse of the anti-terror laws and a systematic campaign by both the government and the leading opposition party, the Tory opposition, to brand uh, mainstream Muslim organizations as in some way beyond the pale and extremist and organizations that can't be dealt with. And most recently that happened, of course, to the Muslim Council of Britain and uh, Dawood Abdullah. And the whole process has been one, I think, which has been aimed at intimidating Muslims from taking an active role and involvement in politics, in mainstream politics in this country. And I'm sorry to say, I think it's been partly successful and that's something we need to turn back. Now, as other speakers have said, uh, the media has played a particularly negative and poisonous role in this process. And of course, the Express, the pornographer's organ, uh, has played perhaps the most uh, poisonous of all, and it's back yesterday with its burn, uh, ban the burqa here in Britain campaign, ban a headline on the front page. And of course, several of the other tabloid newspapers have, pay, have played an equally, or if not quite as bad, but similar kind of approach. But I think the same basic process can be seen across almost all the media. A racist portrayal of Muslims and Islam in general, a tendency to hype all bogus terror plots into something utterly beyond the pale, and as people have said, then they evaporate in a moment uh, once the reality becomes clear. Uh, a process which has verged on incitement uh, and has played a central role, I think, in isolating and intimidating the community. And as we've seen in places like Luton and elsewhere, effectively fueling violence on the streets and attacks on Muslim institutions and mosques in particular. But that onslaught, which we've seen in the most reactionary parts of the media and politics, has also been given a particular force by secular liberals. And this is the new phenomenon, I think, in Islamophobia compared with other forms of racism, who have somehow convinced themselves, because Islam is an ideology, not an ethnicity, that they are somehow defending liberal values and they're on the right side of racism if they campaign against Islam and against Muslims. But of course, as has been said, it's not a mistake that's been made by the British National Party or its leadership, which has realized that religion and Islam in particular has become a very convenient and toxic racial proxy, which can be used much more safely to attack vulnerable communities in this country and around Europe in a much more effective way. And as was already said, Nick Griffin spelt it out for anyone who wasn't listening, that the ramping up uh, of public hostility by the media is exactly what they needed and that they've now exploited so effectively in the recent e election campaigns. Now, just substitute the word Jewish or Sikh, let alone Asian or black, in so many articles and so many news reports about Muslims and Islam in this country, and you can see immediately what is going on. It wouldn't happen, and it shouldn't happen in the case of Islam and Muslims, and that's what this campaign uh, must be all about. Of course, it's not just in Britain. The same process has been going on all over Europe in recent years in different but equally poisonous, often more poisonous ways in Italy and Switzerland, in France. And of course it was President Sarkozy who just the other day launched the brave campaign against the uh, burqa, women wearing, uh, burqa wearing women of France who actually no one can find. But nevertheless he's using it as a stick to beat Muslims in France and beat back 
uh, their attempt to organize themselves and stand independently uh, in that country. This is the last acceptable racism of our day, and it's being waged, it's a campaign that's being waged across this uh, continent. Can you imagine a campaign, the campaign that's being waged against the hijab and the burqa? This is a campaign that's being waged in the name of women's rights. Now, this is a white, right-wing, uh, male politician saying that he's defending liberal values and human freedom by telling women what to wear in France, in Europe today. And of course, that's a theme, and that's a process that has a long history in European colonialism. It was exactly what happened in Egypt at the, at the end of the 19th century. The, uh, the British uh, Lord, ruler, Lord Curzon, led a campaign for women's rights against the hijab. The same by the French in Algeria. So you see that where this is coming from and what kind of pedigree it has. And I think that gives us the key to today's Islamophobia. Because this campaign of Islamophobia, as has been said already, is the direct result and the direct process of underpinning of the imperial wars that are being waged in Iraq, Afghanistan, and now Pakistan, justified as a war on terrorism, but in fact fueling and inciting terror and division on our streets in Britain today. Now last night, I don't know whether people saw the news at 10, but there was a uh, opinion poll about Muslim views in Britain that was done especially for the BBC uh, by their home affairs correspondent who's keen on this kind of thing. And he found the very sinister fact that 76% of Muslims in Britain oppose Britain's involvement in the war in Afghanistan. <laughs> now that's the point of division. It's very worrying, it's a concerning matter and the BBC led the news on it. Now, as though this was some kind of uh, sign of Muslim separation and difference in this country, the fact is that almost exactly the same proportion of all British people oppose Britain's involvement in the war in Afghanistan. So far from being divided on our opposition to colonial wars and the war on terror, the, uh, the state kidnapping and torture, we're united by all these things, Muslims and non-Muslims alike. And so we need to mobilize around that underlying unity, our opposition to colonial wars, our opposition to racism, our opposition to dressing up racism as a legitimate defense of liberal values, and bring out the underlying solidarity between all communities in this country that exists to oppose the threat to the most vulnerable community uh, in Britain today, the most threatened community, which is the Muslim community. Now, that's a campaign. This campaign is one that can and should be much broader and much stronger than any other for that reason. This is not some minority cause. This is something that should unite people across the range. It's not something just for the left. It's an issue for us all, for all people of decency and humanity in this country, and I really wish it well. I think it's going to be successful. Thanks very much.